Hi, I'm retired Navy SEAL sniper instructor Chris Seinog and founder of the New Rules of Marksmanship. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to grip your pistol properly. Now let's go ahead and get started. Joining me now is retired Navy SEAL sniper Chris Seinog. The importance of a proper pistol grip cannot be overemphasized. What I want you to think about anytime you're shooting a pistol is making it an extension of your body. Don't think about your pistol as just something you're holding on to and trying to control. Really make it part of your body. And if you use the techniques that I describe here, it's gonna feel that way. A proper shooting grip is the cure for the common recoil. One of the things I'm gonna talk about in a little bit is not letting the tail wag the dog, okay? Before I get to that, let's go ahead and show you how to set up a proper pistol grip. Now, the first thing that I want you to do is always start with your pistol outside of any holster. Just start with it in your non-shooting hand. Put your shooting hand up on the back of the beaver tail as high up as you can get it. And you want to have your skin tenting up up there. Don't make it so high that it's going to interfere with the slide, but as high up as you can possibly get it. And that's gonna really help ensure that you are supporting the gun as well as possible because the energy when this gun fires is gonna go straight back. Now, because of the way these firearms are designed, you cannot put your hand directly behind that energy. So we wanna get it up as high as possible to have a mechanical advantage. Now, when we do that, you also then want to make sure that your arm is directly in line with your firearm, with the barrel of the firearm. So you can see my arm is in line with that. And this is why it's so important to start outside of the holster because when most people grab a firearm from the holster, they'll grab it like this and they'll pull it out. And you can see that I am nowhere near in line with that. So that means the energy is gonna be coming straight back and forcing my elbows to bend and my whole structure to break down, okay? So we're not gonna do that. So grab the gun, place it in there, tent up your skin, get your arm as straight back as you can behind the gun to support that energy. Now you'll see my thumb is forward here. If you look at this space in here, you can fit your hand by canting your reaction hand or your support hand down at a 45 degree angle and placing it right into that space. So what you wanna do is you wanna take away any spot on the gun that that energy could go to because energy is always gonna go to the path of least resistance. So if I have an open space in here, the energy is gonna be forced into that. So say for instance, I have a little space right here where the energy could go to and I'm allowing the gun to do that. Well, some of the energy is gonna push back this way and I'm gonna be pushing to that side. We don't wanna do that. So we are going to cover this up as much as we can, hand down at a 45 degree angle and you'll see my thumbs are forward. And that is a perfect pistol grip. Now I talked earlier about not letting the tail wag the dog. Now this is one of the biggest misconceptions or pieces of just bad information that I have heard for over 25 years in teaching firearms. And that is that your finger needs to go a specific place on the face of this trigger. And that could not be further from the truth. The place this came from is that professional shooters with very heavy guns and very light triggers they didn't need to worry about having a good grip and they didn't need to worry about manipulating their trigger properly. All they had to do was just touch that trigger and the gun was gonna go bang. But on self-defense pistols like you are shooting, that gun to trigger weight ratio is the difference that makes shooting harder. So it's gonna be more important that I can control the gun with a proper grip. If I grip it properly, and, and I grip it hard, I can do pretty much anything I want to that trigger and it's not gonna move. But if you're trying to put your finger somewhere on a trigger where somebody tells you to, like the pad of the tip of your finger or something like that, it's not gonna work for you, all right? You need to set up your grip first and then let your 
finger land where it may on the face of that trigger and that's gonna be the perfect spot for you. Remember, we're all different as shooters. So with that, some things that you can test to make sure that you are in a good shooting position. Number one is point your gun straight up and your thumb of your reaction or support hand and your trigger finger should be about even. If they are like this or like this, that's gonna mean that, that your grip is canted one side or the other. Another thing you can do here is let go of the gun with your bottom fingers and the gun should stay straight. So that means that the top of my gun, I'm supporting it as well. Now, when I teach a pistol grip, I teach a 100 and 100% 100 grip because if you're in a competition, if you are shooting at somebody who's shooting at you, you're gonna be holding your grip with 100 and 100% 100 grip strength, I guarantee it. So why not practice like that? It's the most stable thing to do. You don't have to worry about a 60-40 grip or a 40-60 grip. You don't have to worry about some crazy push-pull with your different hands. Just grip the gun hard. Imagine if you put your gun in a vise. You could do anything you want to that trigger and it's gonna go where you want. Now, another way that you can test to make sure that you have a good grip, especially having your arm behind the gun here, is just bring the gun up and look down the sights and just squeeze the grip as hard as you can. And you'll see my gun is shaking because I'm literally squeezing as hard as I can. But if I cant my gun off to the side, so uh, now I'm one of these people who grab their gun like this, and now I squeeze the gun, you can see what's happening is the gun is going off to that side. So that's gonna happen every time I shoot this gun if I grip the gun like that. Now, if I were to have it over like this and it's too far off to this side, now when I squeeze, the gun is naturally gonna be shooting to the left. People all the time are saying, oh, all my shots are, are left and low or whatever. All of these things can be diagnosed by yourself and fixed right at home by using a proper grip. A couple of the last ways that you can check to make sure that you have a proper grip are, are you shooting consistently in the center of your target? If you're not, one of the first culprits could be your grip. So make sure you check that and you're doing it properly. When you shoot, does the gun jump out of your hands? And what I mean by that is I'm shooting and the gun goes bang and you have a big recoil because you don't have a proper grip and then you find yourself keep having to readjust your grip. If you're always readjusting your grip on the range, you're not starting off with a proper grip, so make sure you're doing that. A little piece of bonus advice, and that is to work on your grip strength. It's super important, the stronger your hands are, the more you're going to be able to control that gun and put rounds where you want to. So that's it for now. Until next time, keep paving your path to perfection. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed watching that video, and if you did, I put together my top three videos for learning to shoot at home, and I wanna give those to you absolutely free. Now, all you have to do is click the I card that just popped up, or you can go to chrissynog.com forward slash free videos, and I will send you not only those top three videos that I have for learning to shoot at home, but I will also send you a free PDF copy of my new rules of marksmanship manifesto. Click the card, go to chrissynog.com forward slash free videos so I can send you those videos. Keep paving your path to perfection, guys.